You got her, dude. She's down. Let's go. Dude, I just shot a deer of a lifetime. Freaking smoke team. One with nature, and if you're a believer, one with God. Definitely gets your heart pumping. Boy, you are in trouble. Follow Obsession Podcast. All right, episode 100. Quite a milestone and accomplishment for us. I'm pretty pretty excited about it. Um, awesome being here. So I'm Sam with Fall Obsession, your Fall Obsession podcast host. And thank you to listeners or viewers, however you guys might be joining us. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Our podcast is driven by Ridge Rock Hunt Company, and I will talk more about them at the end of the episode. On here with me for this anniversary episode, if you will, um, we got our, our Fall Obsession admin crew, Drew Tordick is back with us from Minnesota. What's up, Drew? Hey, how's it going, Sam? Good, man. Happy to have you on here. And for the first time in a very long time, back on the podcast, uh, my fellow Texan down here, our other administrator, Nick Latham. Welcome back, Nick. Hey, thanks, guys. Glad to be here. Happy to have you as well. And we are unfortunately missing one of our Fall Obsession administrators. Um, I know in our promotions over the past several weeks of this milestone, we were talking about how we would have all four on here. We're missing Nick Powell, um, our media production guy. But um, Nick is a full-time firefighter paramedic, and he was, of course, the timing just uh, didn't work out that way. He was assigned to a wildland deployment to go out and fight the wildfires that we're dealing with right now um, in kind of in west texas and then up into the panhandle and everything so um, he is out there slaying the dragon as we speak so he's unable to join us unfortunately but we're praying that he gets home safe and him and i will uh we'll get back on here for kind of his anniversary recap in a coming episode here in the next few weeks at some point so but for now we uh we got this team on here again super excited this this is a big this is a big deal in, in my opinion you know um we we haven't hit the we, we're past the official two-year mark of our podcast um just just slightly by a month or so um, but episode 100 um with the exception of a few a few weeks here and there just because of scheduling or time constraints you know we've we've done a very good job in my opinion of keeping an episode fresh on hot off the press every single monday morning which has been uh been challenging at times but um needless to say i i, I know i've said on the podcast before this is one of my favorite methods of content creation or one of my favorite things to be a part of because i feel like we can just get on here hang out be ourselves for the most part i know we do the podcast videos now but don't have to really worry about what we look like you know a whole lot compared <laughs> to some of our other our other media but um you know it's been uh it's been a journey and we've met a lot of interesting people um through this yeah. podcast o- over the past couple of years and people that we wouldn't probably wouldn't have met otherwise so mm-hmm. um Kind of going off of that, I know one of the things we wanted to talk about in this milestone episode for us was um, some episodes that kind of stood out to us in the past, um, you know, that either were special to us because we were part of them or when we listened to them with the other guys on the crew recording, you know, it it, kind of kind of hit home or you know was just an awesome listen for us ourselves and obviously if you're a new listener this will point you in the direction of some episodes you can go back and check out um but nick latham i'll i'll let you start since it's been a minute since you were on here (laughs) um but i'll i'll let you dive in and talk a little bit about it because i know i know while you haven't been you know in the episodes for a while i know you're a loyal listener and you and you try to keep up and everything so yeah absolutely um, I mean, as you, I don't know, I just kind of go back to even the, some of the first ones that we did, yeah. uh, when I was on a couple of them, um, you know, I think as we, as you listen to those and as you listen to other ones throughout this series, um, one thing that I always go back to is just, I love, I love the recap of the hunts. I love the recaps of deer camp or, you know, just camp you know, camp in general. Um, 
I think you alluded to it uh, in one of the latest episodes with um, uh, with the snow goose hunt. Yes. And, you know, you just start thinking about that and just, you know, it's it's not just that one time deal. And it's not even like awkward, like you were saying in that one, you know, you just show up. And I can remember the first one we did in San Angelo. Yep. And all of a sudden we're just like talking and having a good old time and we're bringing in we're helping each other skin deer and all that stuff and it just right off the bat um there wasn't like this warm-up period like we need an icebreaker or something yeah uh so you know i really enjoy that getting to listen to that the camaraderie that comes from that but i think really uh just in this age that we're in the society that we're in with social media being so big and everything being virtual getting to get back to the basics of getting out there, putting your hands on something, seeing someone face to face, you know, having those conversations and just uh, the community that's built through that is just, just amazing. And, and you, you tend to forget um, how much, you know, we take that for granted or, or don't count the blessings that are there um, that are experienced when we have that. And so that fellowship's always awesome. Um, you know, so getting to hear them talk about that camp, you know, and all of them getting to get there immediately and all of a sudden they're hitting it off. It, it just brought back memories as, yep. as to that time that we had. Um, and then also uh, with Mark Zorch, um, that story, I don't know. I just got a soft spot in my heart for veterans and first responders just in general as well. Um, you know, the, the dedication and the uh, he's just so laid back yeah and so just like humble and you you see somebody like that and you listen you watch and you look at his mannerisms and and like he's just totally blown away with the moment and getting to kind of relive those things uh what he was thinking what he was going through blah blah blah. like that just i mean i don't know it gives me chills sometimes as i'm listening to those stories because it's like man i want to be there like i want to be there um and I hope that that our listeners and, and those that are watching, um, I hope that they're getting to experience that as well. Um, you know, as we talk about these things and we're doing these things, you know, hopefully as we get bigger and we keep growing, that there will be opportunities for even our followers to come on, you know, possibly even more hunts that we could provide things like that uh, to extend this community out um, physically, not just virtually. Um, make that connection and go cross platform on that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the the story with Mark, man, it was just, it was. I, I second everything you just said. It was it was incredible, and and I know that was a very that whole ordeal, like like the whole build up to it. I mean, it was a big thing yeah. for us to do just as fall obsession. You know, I mean, we, yes, we had him on the podcast to talk about the experience, but there's a video and other stuff to go with it. Um, we for those who don't know, we did a, a veteran giveaway last fall, uh, at fall obsession. We had one of our pro staffers down here in Texas, Waylon Langford. He, he offered up a hunt is what he did. And for, for a veteran. And we, we kind of did a, I say giveaway. It was a giveaway, but we, we wanted these guys to apply, you know, and actually, you know, tell us their story. You know, we, we yeah. wanted to, we wanted to choose somebody and give this hunt to somebody, um, based off of that. And, um, you know, we got, Mark obviously applied for it and everything. And, you know, I remember calling him and he's super excited. You know, I mean, I, I call, well, I called him and left a message first, you know, I just, you know, he never picked up. And then like 30 seconds later, my phone's ringing, he's calling me <laughs> back and he's like, are you serious? Like he's so, so pumped and so excited. And so at that point I get, I'm excited for him. I'm excited about yeah. it, but I'm really nervous at that point. Cause we never done anything like this before. <laughs> And now I'm thinking, all right, this guy's expectations are here. Yeah. I have to, I have to meet, if not exceed those from this point on. And, you know, I was, it was just, it was nervous for me. And, you know, Waylon had been talking to me about, you know, just some of the, the dry weather and stuff that we've been experiencing and how, you know, he, he wasn't seeing quite as many mature bucks and stuff. And, you know, I was very, I kept reiterating to Mark, Hey, this is a, it's a low fence property it's a free range whitetail hunt this is not a not a ranch and he's like yeah man it's 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 good i'm good with it you know and uh you know i was nervous going to pick him up at the airport i'm like i'm about to drive in a car with a guy for three hours that i've never met before <laughs> and go out and hunt with him for a weekend and man it just like 
just like deer camp, like you were talking about, you hit it off right away. Like, yeah. you know, he, he shows up at the airport and, and just like that, it, we were off and running and, I, you know, seeing his excitement the whole time, it was freaking cold that weekend. I was freezing my butt off, but it was <laughs> so much fun being out there with him. It, it, it was an absolute blast. And I know, I know Waylon would second it. He was out there with us too. Um, it's just, I really hope we get an opportunity to do something like that again, you know, in the future, yeah. whatever the circumstances may be. Cause that, that was just an incredible, incredible thing to be a part of, not just to hear his story, but for us not, and not for us just to be able to put on, but just to be able to, to witness it. It was, it was awesome. So yeah, yeah I, I 100% agree with that, that that was, if there's been a highlight of the last year or one of the big highlights of our podcast, I, I think episode 90 is one of them. So yeah, absolutely. What else you yep. got? That was man. I don't know. I got stuck on that one. Yeah. Like I already knew. Like I told y'all. Like I already knew that was gonna be my favorite episode. Yeah. Like you're watching this and you're just like just watching. So we we had that video series, and so I'm watching that, and then I'm like, I already know. As soon as we get this guy out, like the way he reacted there. I know I'm going to love that podcast because the dude is just so humble and amazing. All like it's, he's just a great guy. Um, so, I mean, after that, I mean, yes, obviously, you know, there's some pretty awesome, you know, the bear hunts and the, Oh yeah. You know, just, you know, you get flooded with all the different other ones, but I, I think that the one common theme that I had that just, transverse through all of those was just that camaraderie and and why we do what we do yeah it's the camaraderie it's the yeah it's fun to go out there and obviously hunt and do those things but man nothing can replace that camaraderie 100 percent agree yeah and and I'll, I'll second what you said about the san angelo thing too with those snow goose that snow goose crew bringing back those yeah those memories you know I, I i had you know i saw the pictures and i'd been texting with todd and everything over the course of that weekend and and stuff and you know i could tell they were excited and having a good time but it really wasn't until i jumped on there with them and actually got to talking with them that i was like holy holy cow this is the exact same thing that that we experienced you know in yeah. 2019 so this is this absolutely is awesome. so yep Drew, definitely for sure we'll turn it over to you man let's let's hear uh let's hear your take on it and some of your thoughts about the last 99 episodes oh, man just touching on what you guys have already talked about uh you know that story with mark is really interesting just in the fact that we had so many good submissions and so many quality mm-hmm. people that we had to select from in that process so yeah. you know we ended up choosing mark just based on his his story that he told us in that application or in that letter that he sent us and you know i think there were a lot of other interesting stories that could have been told and a lot of other great people that could have met in that process and so i'm like you i'm excited to do it again and you know i hope it's something that we can do again this year um looking at it whether we do it you know down in texas or if we do it up here in minnesota or somewhere it'd just be awesome to do that kind of hunt again yeah Yeah. uh for me i think some of the some of the podcast that I remember the most are um, just some of the guests that we've had on, uh, you know, whether it was Lance Mathena um, from the National Association of Blind Sportsmen, um, or whether it was, you know, Brad Luttrell from Go Wild. Yeah. Uh, it was another, another awesome podcast for me, just, you know, being able to talk to him about stuff that we're seeing in the industry. Yeah, you know, as the marketing person, you know, behind the scenes, we're dealing with a lot of censorship and a lot of, um, we're dealing with a lot of technology that really doesn't want people putting hunting content out there. And so it, it was an interesting podcast for me to talk with him about that and really have that discussion. Absolutely. Yeah. That's episode 86. If any of our listeners want to go back and, and listen to that, that's actually one of the, the few podcasts that I was not on um, over the past 99 episodes. Drew and Nick Powell took that one away and knocked it out of the park. Brad seemed like, a, just from listening to the episode myself, seemed like a really, again, one of those awesome, laid-back, kind of down-to-earth type of guys. And just, I don't know, an incredible thing that he did with building that Go Wild platform and everything. Just got kind of the same thing that all of us are. You know, they're they're fed up with uh, 
with us being put on the back burner on all these main mm-hmm. platforms. So he uh, he yeah. took action and did something about it. So. Yep. Well, I'll I'll touch on a couple that uh that were just really awesome stories to me and again I'll I'll reiterate that just being able to meet these people and talk to these people like you said Nick the the hunting stories, you know, hearing people get excited about their own memories and everything like that and building these relationships has been has been really awesome. Um, I know I, I've always been, and I, I'll, I'll still continue to say this, the in-person podcasts are my absolute favorite because you're actually sitting with these people. You actually get yeah. to meet them. And honestly, like I, I really wish we could just be recording nonstop from the second we walk in, you know, because so much more is talked about when you're in person with these folks without any mics or cameras rolling. Like you just, you just yeah. get, get in a groove and start talking. It's like, I need you to say this exactly the same way with the same passion here in about 15 minutes, you know? I mean, it's just some of it you don't feel like you can recreate, but I don't know, just being able to interact with people like that and, uh, you know, the in-person ones, obviously, we're we're more limited on that. The virtual aspect has allowed us to, um, one, have 100 episodes and, two, um, be able to bring people in that we wouldn't have been able to otherwise. Um but really one of those first big sessions that we had um, where we were sitting down with people, obviously Nick Powell down here with, with me, we're relatively close to each other. Um, so we were a, we were able, especially early on to meet up a lot and record some of those early episodes in person. So we had that element of it with us, but um, we sat down with, um, our fellow pro staffer, Waylon Langford and Chance Nelms, um, another friend of ours, actually from the, from the fire department, um, for episodes 25 and 26. And we were really just talking about, um, their unique hunting environment, the same environment we ended up taking Mark to, you know, um, with the veteran hunt. Um, but really talking about just the uniqueness and the big whitetails that they have up there um, and just hearing their stories from up there. And I think in that second episode, Chance in particular got into some, or, or maybe it was later on when we had him back. I don't even recall now, but there was, we, we had him back on later um, for episode, I think he joined us for 43, 44 and 45 um and we he talked about some just absolute crazy stories like being you know six feet away from a pig that's about to charge him and just all all this crazy (laughs) stuff that happened up there and it's just it's stuff you can't make up and hearing these people talk about it it, is just awesome the other one that i that i really loved and the story's not even over yet and i'll get to that but um good personal friend of mine um before we were ever doing our podcast kelly cato um having him on for episode 61 and 62 um to talk about his texas bighorn sheep that he got to kill back in 2004 um one he is an incredible storyteller himself so i mean he 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 can he can tell a a great story and recap on that um but just hearing about one how he got that tag like this is literally that year a one in a million chance of him getting that tag and he got it didn't even know what he had until later on like he tried to give it away he didn't he's like i don't i don't have any big horns on my property you can give that tag to somebody else it's like no you don't understand man this is we're, we're giving you a hunt it's, it's not just the tag we're giving you the whole hunt um so just hearing him tell that story and then just the ruggedness of that hunt and, and the challenge that he had to do something that hardly anybody down here in Texas is is ever able to do. Um, and then this year, this past hunting season, he he finished out his, um, his Grand Slam with that, with uh, all in Texas, a mule deer, a pronghorn, and a whitetail just completely rounding that thing out and we actually we got him back on the podcast for episode 82 to talk about the pronghorn hunt that was the first one that he knocked out and the, another one that i really enjoyed recording in person because we're sitting at this table it's on video too we have a podcast video for it on our youtube channel we're sitting at a table and like he killed this thing two days before like i, I got him on the podcast like that and the dead pronghorn head is thawing literally on the table <laughs> in between us like it, it's still frozen and everything and we scored it too um we scored it on camera there and everything and so it was 
it was a really cool uh cool experience just to be able to to recap something again that fresh and then mm -hmm. i'm still trying to schedule a time to get him back on to finish out the story because like i said he completed it with the uh, the mule deer and the white tail as well later on that year so he uh, completely rounded that one out so that's a that's one that's still still to look forward to um but i truly i truly enjoyed that the and and i'm I know I'm hitting quite a few here, and I hope our listeners are taking notes because these are these are good ones to go back and and recap. But um, the grizzly bear or the, brown, the Alaskan brown bear episode, excuse me, um, which are episodes 63 and 64, another two part. Um, having having uh, Adam and and Tana, I think is her name, on the on the podcast to talk about not just an incredible story, but one where you got out of it literally by the skin of your teeth you you almost <laughs> died and in the end just to, and yeah. and again hearing them tell it themselves and especially as recent as it was at the time that we got the podcast it was like it you could it sent chills down your back you know thinking yeah. about it and and i i'm still amazed to this day that adam reacted the way that he did in that situation you know being able to get those final shots with that revolver into that bear to save their lives literally yeah. um you know it's 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 absolutely crazy and I, I don't even know if i would react like that or if i just be like i'm done this is it you know so yeah. it's just uh yeah another another awesome awesome story and and like you guys have already mentioned the the snow goose hunts just oh, yeah. here in that crew just as recent as episodes 97 and 98 hearing those guys recap um that trip that they had just a few weeks ago was absolutely incredible you could sense the passion you could sense the excitement and the desire to do it again it made me want to go with them next yeah. time so yeah. um i i definitely definitely look forward to next year and i know they do as well and again those are some episodes to definitely go back and and listen to so mm -hmm. um and the last thing that I'll say too, just on the building relationships, and I know I, I alluded to this in last week's podcast with uh, Derek and Lacey from Ridge Rock, um, and I know I don't even know if you guys have had a chance to listen to that one yet. At, at, at the time we're recording episode 100 today, that episode's only been out for a few hours, so it's it's hot off the press as of today. But um, go back a week for our listeners, episode 99, um, meeting with Derek and Lacey. They've been on the podcast several times with us. Um, over the course of these past few years. And that's just one of those relationships that we probably never would have had if it weren't for our podcast. I told Derek last week that um, the the first time that I ever saw his name or anything was when we did our pronghorn country, like send us a picture of your pronghorn, you know, and we'll, mm -hmm. we'll post it. And he sent me one of his Montana pronghorn that year and just on Instagram got to message him back and forth. And next thing you know, it's like, well, let's get this guy on a podcast, you know, and yeah. here we are, they've been on three or four podcasts with us. And now we're with their new brand that they're rolling. We're, we're partnered with them now. And just over the past two, two years it's been incredible to get to know them and you know have have that relationship build with them so again just those opportunities that we wouldn't have otherwise um if it weren't for something like this so yeah it's uh it's pretty special in my opinion yeah it is <clears throat> hey do you ever ask him where he shot that because i mean we don't have to talk about exactly where it was but just looking at the pictures it looks like a very similar area to where we hunted so, so i He's in the same so I mean, I can I can find out for you or for our listeners because uh, he he's gone back a couple times. It's one of the outfitters that he has in his network now um, for okay. booking hunts. But I think it's where, and and Derek may correct me if he if he hears this. I want to say it's the same outfitter out there and kind of in southeastern Montana where Larry McCoy. Um, with elite likes to hunt down there um I, I and i forget i the name of it has has slipped past me here but uh yeah i i, I want to say it's kind of south southeastern montana over there somewhere so okay. well, i think it'd be interesting for us to talk about uh you you know since maybe since the time we started the podcast but also since we've started the fall obsession like some of the changes that we've seen as far as technology and, you know, where we were at versus where we're at now. Yeah. Um, 
you know, I'm just thinking of some of the first posts that I sent in and some of the early content that we created as a group and, you know, compare that to where we're at now and the content that we're putting out is a huge, huge difference. Yeah. When we were looking back, right, early, early production was an older model iPhone, maybe, uh, yeah. occasionally pulling out the professional camera when, you know, you had room for a tripod or you trying to do some self filming. Um, but it always added so much weight, especially hiking in the back country. Yeah. So I ended up doing a lot of my early production with just a handheld iPhone and, you know, looking at some of the tools that we're using now, it's, it's a big difference. Absolutely. It is. And then also like, I know y'all have way more experience at this, but just I'll go out there and, you know, I'll have the GoPro set up and I've got the bigger camera set up and I'm so stinking clumsy, like getting it set up and think I got the perfect shot. And then I go back, I'm like, what were you doing? You're drifting off your shot and everything. Like, <laughs> and just, just when someone does have a great shot, just how much work goes into that to get that mm -hmm. and the, the technique and just, uh, just how much time they obviously spent to learn that. And I know, you know, between what the equip the equipment's changing super fast, um, and technology is just growing at such a fast rate. But also, um, with that said, I just appreciate you know how you're, you know, kind of giving your um, passing that on to the other staffers and even you know to the community as abroad uh, as we as we stretch out even further. That expertise um, and that experience that you know we're we're giving that out and, and there's places that you can go to go learn about that. And I think that's amazing. Yeah, for sure. No, it, it's definitely been a, been a journey and, and equipment upgrades and stuff. And I mean, you, you talked about, you know, videoing on an iPhone drew, even still, you know, some of our stuff we can, we do on an iPhone, but even with technology improvements on an iPhone, you, it, you can't tell anymore, you know, if you're just watching the video. So, um, definitely using technology to our advantage and helping to to make our content better and you know mm -hmm. trying to especially here just recently you know trying to really put some put some ideas and some thoughts in our staffers staffers minds as far as what they can do to to better mm -hmm. their content from the field you know and their yeah. submissions and stuff that our our followers see on our pages is it, yeah. it, it's a lot and then just learning talk about learning film styles you know and yeah. i know i watch i watch quite a videos from a, quite a few different hunting channels and stuff on youtube and you know i i i, I almost feel cheated because i can't i don't like enjoy the show anymore as much as i used to i i spend the whole time watching how they film it how they edit it what what yeah. do they do with with b-roll with music with you know yeah. angles and everything you know I, I, that's where all of my attention goes no matter what i'm watching now so uh, thanks fall obsession <laughs> but <laughs> but i, I mean that, that's how we get better you know that's how we uh that's how we learn and you know i i I feel like all the time I pick up an idea for an edit or for, for a film or production or something on, Hey, I'm going to have to try that, you know, see how it turns out. And yeah. our, our content has improved because of it. I know, I know Nick Powell does the same thing and, and would say that something similar too, if he were on here with us. So, um, yeah, it's just, it, it it's a constant journey. And then yeah. we also, uh, you know, I kind of, I kind of, throw this disclaimer out there but i'm proud of it at the same time that you know we've never really gone to a true film school any of us um at least to my knowledge to to real drew's grin over there like maybe he's got more <laughs> more yeah. say on that <laughs> yeah, with a degree in digital photography so well have, yeah we we you're educated we get yeah. it all right yeah <laughs> 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 I have never gone to a uh, photography school. Pal has never gone to photography or videography no. school. I know and, Nick Lake. And all of you on our field staff and field staff that produce great content haven't. Yeah. And it's amazing to see some of the content that they're sending in. And, you know, I know that from my experience, hearing those guys talk, they're going out to other hunting shows that they like and like you had mentioned looking and seeing what about those shows they like and trying those shots themselves and you know to watch you know, not only ourselves grow but to watch our field staff the content that they've submitted mm -hmm. 
the quality in that is substantially different than when we started too and you know in such a good way the stuff oh, yeah. that they're sending in now is is so good it, it's really exciting to see well and, and again we're, we're learning as we go and we've learned a lot and then also just learning on on what what needs to be posted and what doesn't you know and and mm-hmm. you know i i know there's probably some staffers even though they might not have openly expressed it with me you know when we when they send in something that doesn't meet that quality and we bounce it back you know there's pr- sometimes i'm sure that there's that feeling of well, what the heck man you know but they they if if so they haven't took taken a great initiative to openly express that to me and you know that, that that's fine but um ultimately that's what that's what helps you know make it better because we don't just say no no thank you we yeah. provide feedback we you know I, we include you know hey next time maybe try this maybe maybe think about this this might be better for this type of content and try to try to build things up for them and give them more ideas on how they can they can improve as well so yeah and when we say obsession i mean obsession's not just getting in the stand Obsession is the all-encompassing aspect of capturing that moment. Yeah. And so we're constantly going to be going, you push the limits, go further, you know, go deeper. We want our, we want our staff, we want our community to do that. We don't want to just stop with, oh, well, that's good enough. No, we want to keep going, like get better all the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I was laughing hearing you talk about, you know, it's more than just the fall hunting stuff. Um, I was up recently up at my farmland, a um, little bit north of here, and the amount of snow that was up there was, it was insane. Um, I went out there with the hopes of shed hunting. I texted some people in the area, and they said, oh, there's, you know, a few inches to a couple of feet. And I got out there and got 50 yards from the truck and was standing in waist deep snow. and. It, it didn't get better the rest of the time. I was out there laughing, like making content. And so, you know, talking about some things that we're looking for in the future, like you guys are going to see that content coming out. Um, we're going to have a lot more coming up from the Minnesota stuff. And, you know, those are what you're talking about, those times where it's more than just the fall, right? Waiting through yeah. waste of snow with the hopes of shed hunting. <laughs> so, so did you find any sheds? Uh no, actually, <laughs> no, no. But, and Moose was lucky because he could walk on top of the crust of the snow, but I was breaking through. So. <laughs> yeah, that, that that'll happen. Yeah, but no, I mean that that that's spot on, and you know we're it, it's not just you know I mean Fall Obsession's the name, it's the brand, you know it's the yeah. it's the the catchphrase, however you want to look at it, but. Um, we're we're doing stuff year round, you know, bow fishing, turkey hunting, you know, scouting mm-hmm. in the summer. I know here, uh, here probably next month, we're going to be ramping up, uh, round two of, of Texas dirt down here with our management property. And I got, I got a bunch of stuff in store for, for that piece of land and a bunch of new stuff, new equipment that's going out there this year. And that is going to make not just, the show more interesting for our viewers but it's also gonna hopefully make my hunting season a lot better (laughs) so i mean that's the ultimate goal right but um yeah it's just there it's a constant you know there there is no off season in the end you know it's a it's a constant revolving door of you know one thing after another so Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah so my wife and older daughters came to me like i don't know it was like four or five weeks ago And they're like, hey, we should go to Florida. I'm like, wait, what? (laughs) Yeah, we're trying to, like, the plan, the plan this year was that we were going to add on to the house. And then they're like, no, well, we can go on vacation to Florida. I'm like, whoa, hey, whoa. (laughs) I thought we were going to add on to the house. Oh, yeah, we can do that. I'm like, what? So anyway, she finds this killer deal. Um and it's like this family camp that we're going to, but it's right across the street from the beach. Um, and so, of course, the first thing I do is you know, what charters charters are around, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, the kids haven't been out on a boat before in the ocean. So 
I wanted to go with a little bit bigger of a boat. So it's a little bit more stable. And, um, so we're going to do that, uh, Panama city beach area. Um, going to go out of there. We got a five hour trip to just a trolling trip that we're going to go on that. So, uh, two of the kids are going to go with me and they're just super excited. Of course, you know, when it first comes up, I was like, Hey, who wants to go fishing? You know, all of, yeah! and I was like, all right, here's the rules. It's a five hour trip. And once you go out, you don't come back for five hours <laughs> and you just see them, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, Dawson and Charlize are like, no, I want to go. So they're super excited. And then, um, it's Pompano season. So we're going to hit the surf fishing the rest of the days. Um, and hopefully I follow a guy on YouTube, um, and, uh, oh, his name, I think it's Bama beach bum, uh, really cool guy has good clean content and, uh, man, he's, he's right there between Alabama and Florida and he's just catching tons of them right now. So I'm super excited. The kids are like, just, I mean, they can't contain themselves right now. So hopefully we will gather some, we've, we've upgraded some cameras and gotten some other things. So hopefully we get some content that's awesome. worth posting. Awesome. <laughs> Sometimes when you're trading, trading out who's filming and stuff, you don't get the best shots, but we'll see. Um, so we'll be doing that. Uh, get to spend the week down there and, um, actually we're going to be leaving pretty soon. So, um, once we get this wrapped up, it's the packing and then getting ready to get out there. So awesome. yeah, they're super excited about that. Heck yeah, man. That's awesome. Yeah. It sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, uh, we might have to do a, if it's a, if it's a, a good story, we might have to have you come <laughs> back on here to recap that story at some point. So absolutely. And more than likely, I'm sure Dawson might have something to say about it. <laughs> that, so <laughs> that just made me think that kid if there's any kid we need to get on the podcast it's him because i'm thinking I, I just flashed back to the last time you joined us it was like yeah. around that episode 10 11 12 mark in there yeah. so a, a long time ago um that you were on here but i think it was when we were talking about hog hunting in episode yeah. 11 <laughs> Um, you told, you told a story about him and, and your older son, Byron shooting a pig out there on your property and yeah. absolute, one of the most hilarious kid hog, hog hunting stories I've heard. Um, but it, it, it made me think it's, and he was with us at San Angelo as well yeah. down there. Yeah. And especially after that experience and hearing that story, yeah, Dawson needs to make an appearance on here. We'll, we'll have to, we'll have to make I think that so. Happen. so, yeah. <laughs> To, to be determined on when that's going to happen, but we'll we'll find yeah. a day. But we will make it happen. Yes, absolutely. Something to look forward to. Yeah, I can re I can remember Dawson sitting down with your dad, Sam, at the picnic table, and just telling him all sorts of hunting stories. I, I think that's uh, I think we got a little clip of that in one of our videos from that hunt of my dad mm -hmm. sitting there across, and Dawson's just got these big hand gestures going on. He's just telling the story, him shooting that buck and everything. Like he kids never met a stranger like no he, we go we go nick brings his kids there to to san angelo for for the staff hunt down there and you know we talk about you know us just everybody just falling in and clicking you know and us and staff members that we'd never met before you know just yeah. in person just uh just falling in well dawson was definitely part of that dawson was the was the the hit of the week pretty much he he uh he was everybody's best friend by the end of that weekend so <laughs> oh yeah everybody loves dawson <laughs> yep yep maybe that's what we'll call the episode we'll see yeah. <laughs> or you can recap his pig hunt and we'll call it yard sale because that's what he <laughs> Yeah. that kid coming in just soaking wet without his boots on you're just like what happened to you <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness that kid he's hilarious well i look forward to, to hearing how the fishing trip goes with him then yeah it'll be fun so oh yeah well guys so the past several weeks that we've been on here um with our normal episodes we've been encouraging our listeners to to chime in and and give us some some feedback or ask some questions and stuff um 
Uh, we did get a few a few responses, and if, uh, I, I'm not gonna I, I can narrow it down to to five that I'll mention on here um, this this evening with us. Um, there were several of just you know some encouraging comments about enjoying the podcast or you know like the website and that kind of stuff. So um, if you if you're a listener that chimed in with one of those supportive comments, we greatly appreciate it. Please continue to to listen and subscribe and share and do all that good stuff. Um, that's that's how we grow and we appreciate that. That's mm-hmm. that's what keeps us doing this, keeps us putting this kind of content out. Um, but we had a just some of the the main ones here that I'll that I'll pick apart and throw out there um Mr. Daniel C from Indiana he chimed in and said that he would love to see some more videos talking about bow teching from from home if you will and he commented on how he loved the uh 2022 or buying a bow in 2022 podcast that Nick Powell and I did not that long ago. So that, that is an episode for our listeners that we kind of talked about what, just what's on the market today and kind of how specs on bows are, are determined and how they work right now. So if you are looking for a new bow right now, that's, that's one to listen to. And, um, I think Daniel's right. We should do some more videos on, on bow teching. So we'll see what we can yeah. do to, to make that happen. It's, I know I'm passionate about archery, so I'm, I'm sure I could come up with something to talk about. So, yeah <laughs> uh, we got a, a huntress on here amy from colorado she simply said bring ali butler back on ali butler is one of those guests that uh that we had on i i think it was early 50s either 52 or 53 i want to yeah. say is the episode number that she came on ali uh hunts out there in the in the midwest kind of kentucky kansas area over there so um we might we'll have to reach back out to her and <laughs> maybe try to schedule another episode to have her on. So it was a good conversation last time we had that talking about go wild, uh, drew and that episode you did with, uh, Brad, Steve from Michigan. He says he listened to the go wild podcast and signed up. He really likes the app. Um, but wants to know what we as fall obsession are going to do to combat censorship on our main platforms. And I know we kind of briefly, discuss that but it is a uh, i don't know i figured i might throw that one to you for just a second there because a- as we've already alluded to earlier in the episode it's uh is that uh is that moose <laughs> yeah that was moose i was in trouble <laughs> man, man we've had we've had three weeks now where we've had a dog chime in on the podcast we had andy with the snow goose recap his dog was getting all up in there and then last week with Derek, his dog just randomly jumps up into his lap while we're recording so guys will get to see that pretty early on in the podcast video when it comes out so and now moose is making a ruckus so yeah yeah it happens (laughs) yeah it does so no that's a great question about go wild um, and what we're doing to combat the censorship, if you will. Uh, I think the biggest thing that we're doing, there's not much we can do to combat it um, besides adapt. Uh, so one of the things that we've really been focusing on and discussing as a group is how can we create content that resonates with our viewers that isn't necessarily hunting content or unfortunately doesn't even have, you know, a bow or shooting in it. You know, what, what's the auxiliary content that we can create um, that'll resonate with people that can still get the coverage that we need to bring in new viewership. Yeah. This is probably the shortest way to answer that question. Yeah. It's a, it's a question mark kind of. So <laughs> yeah, it's something where we're always trying new things and sort of trial and error, seeing what works and what doesn't, um, you know, just, Briefly, I can talk about it. Some ads that we ran recently, we saw some amazing results for some of them and some pretty poor results for others. And the only difference between the two was the picture on the, the thumbnail. So it's surprising what they're flagging and what can affect your performance. So we're doing everything we can to get as much coverage as possible. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's an uphill battle. And unfortunately in this industry, one for, especially for, for smaller fish like us, one that is, uh, that's hard to, hard to fight, but like, like you said, trial and error, keep plugging along and see what works. So, yeah. 
And I'll actually plug Go Wild. You know, it's the only spot that we can post whatever we want, whether it's guns, um, bows, dead animals, whatever it is. Um, we've never been censored on Go Wild, which is an amazing thing. Um, so we've got a link on our homepage and put one in the description of the video below. But yep. go check it out. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's about the only place you can go that's that is specifically built for hunting content is what it is so yeah and, and i'll i'll add in too that you know it's the only place where as an average person you have any chance of getting rewarded for sharing your content yeah yeah and, you know the first time you sign up and submit a trophy picture they give you a ten dollar gift certificate to use on any hunting gear you want and you know you just keep getting rewarded so that's that's another benefit yeah, they have a reward system and a point system and, and everything. And, you know, I mean, sometimes it's, like you said, discount codes or gift cards, um, decals. Sometimes it's hats, T-shirts, you know, bigger. I mean, the farther the farther into it you get, you know, the kind of the greater the reward is as it progresses. So they got a, an awesome system in place with that and um, even a system that we're – we've – taking some pointers from you know in in modeling some of our own staff programs so you know it's they, they got a good thing going for sure so yep. um a couple more real quick um ryan from florida asks what is the best bow for under a thousand dollars um i know we like i just mentioned we had a uh we had a podcast not that long ago nick pal and myself talking about uh, just that, you know, um, kind of what's available in the market right now. I, the short answer for this podcast is that, um, a lot of the name brand bow manufacturers have a, a midline bow that is built for, um, kind of that price point anywhere from six to around $800. And typically for a hundred or 150 more, they have what's called an RTS or ready to shoot package that you can put on that bow, which basically has that bow rigged out, ready to go out the door for under a grand. All you need is arrows and a release, and you're good to shoot. So um, best thing to do, Ryan, if you're listening, is go to your local dealer, shoot some bows, see what fits you best. Make sure you try that Elite. Um, they, they have an awesome bow this year for 2022 in that $600 price range at the lower end of that uh, – at that spectrum so needless to say see what bow works best for you try them all and uh you know shop around shop prices and ask your your dealer your pro shop if they have a, a ready to shoot package for any of those so no they should get you fixed up so i'd add in one thing too uh you know really look at and compare those models that give you a lot of adjustability especially if it's your first bow um i know me personally my draw length varied quite a bit my draw weight varied quite a bit when i was first learning and really being able to dial that in and tune that was a big yeah. big factor and, you know there's multiple companies that make those adjustable bows but probably include those in something that you're looking at too absolutely and again if you want more details on on exactly what those bows are go back and listen to that podcast I, again it's titled buying a bow in 2022 um, just a few weeks ago on our fall obsession podcast so all right, last one, and we will uh, kind of round it out. Brandon from Nebraska says he listens to he listened to the Snow Goose episodes, and he asks, "What do you have to do to be a staffer?" So, again, this is a group of our own staffers that are that are meeting up and having a good time. I I kind of wondered if we'd get a get some inquiries <clears throat> about this, but I'm glad that we did. Um, uh, Brandon, I believe you just got to go to fallobsession.com slash staff opportunities and you can apply straight from there. We, yep. We'll put the link below. It is, uh, it, I mean, we explain everything as far as how the staff program works and everything on that page and stuff. So you can read through it and get a better understanding for how we, how we credit content, how we reward, um, for, for posting and, and that kind of stuff and kind of where those benchmarks are and everything. And, uh, and go from there. You can uh, send us a, uh, fill out that form and that'll send us an email saying that you're interested. And from there we can get you hooked up with an official application and start that process. So, and that goes for anybody that's interested in applying. Um, I know that we, 
we have had a, a wait list in the past as far as uh, you know that we're trying to work through for for new staffers but we recently like, like I mentioned earlier we kind of remodeled some stuff in our staff program we made some adjustments and uh, so we're we're finishing out that wait list right now and we are accepting new applications so if you guys are interested in joining our fall obsession staff and being a part of this team uh, go to our website and apply there's plenty of different uh, spots on that website that'll direct you to the right page. So, yep. I'd say I'd say the other thing that you should do too is if you're interested in becoming a field staff with us, um, make sure you have a good social media page that yep. you're interacting with people, that you're posting content that reflects what you want to be considered for. So, yep. Make sure those pages are public too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and to build on that again, you know, we're we're looking for content creators or are the folks that we want to and and not to say that you maybe you're you're not a professional photographer or to have a bunch of, you know, professional mm -hmm. style outdoor photos on your on your page or everything, but we're looking for people who are passionate about content creation and and doing so and hunting in the outdoors. Yeah. Um and if you fit that bill, then absolutely we'll want to have you on the podcast. Or yeah, we might want to have you podcast. We want to have you on staff. Uh, let me yeah. uh, let me rephrase that. But um, also, we are our staff program is is far more involved than any other staff program, in my opinion, as far as how much we not just we interact with our staffers, but our staffers interact with each other. And yeah. we we've put some stuff in place internally within our company to try and uh, encourage that more and more in, in different areas of the country and everything. And and have seen a lot. Of, I mean, the snow goose hunt is is that we've talked about is, is a result of that. Um, so all that being said, like like Drew mentioned, make sure that we can we can see your stuff and, and send us some examples of what you can do, um, because not to sound like we're being hard on anybody, but our, our process for becoming a staffer is, is, is more than just filling out a form and us sending you a sticker and calling it good. You know, we want to get to know you. So, yeah. um, be sure that you, that you set yourself up for, to be successful in, in us being able to do that. So, yeah. Well guys, you got anything else that you'd like to talk about in our, our milestone episode here before we head for home? Nah, it's just amazing. <laughs> yeah, it, it it's crazy. It's amazing. It it's awesome that we've yeah. we have a hundred episodes on. I, I I I forget where I saw it, but it was it was pretty early on in our podcast. I I saw something where like a, a very large percentage of podcasts that people try to start don't make it past like episode eight or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And here we are at episode 100 so I, I always think back to that I, I wish I saved the article or whatever I read but um, it, it was it's it's a cool milestone and what's even better is we're not done you know yeah no. we're we're uh, we're excited to be here and obviously making a big deal out of it with this podcast but next week will be episode 101 and then after that 102 like it, it it's not gonna stop so um, on that note, for our listeners, be sure that you follow and subscribe on whatever podcast platform you're listening on, um, or on all major podcast platforms, as well as uh, our website, fallobsession.com, and our YouTube channel. Um, be sure you subscribe to that YouTube channel. I know Drew has uh, been doing some hard work over there on, on the YouTube yeah. channel and everything to to get get that content top notch and we post multiple times a week on that with new videos over various topics a lot about our podcast but then uh, a lot of other stuff is especially right now with what we're doing in the off season and everything so be sure you guys subscribe facebook instagram twitter those are the the big name social media platforms that we are on and we do ask you guys go and follow and subscribe if you're active on those platforms because um, that does help us despite some of the stuff we've talked about today um, and then go wild, go check them out um, on their, mm -hmm. on their app and uh, set up an account and get going. It's free to start and everything like that. You, I mean, you don't have to pay a dime if you don't want to as, as yeah. you, you can buy gear and other stuff through their app, but that's about the only time you're going to pay money. So um, go check them out. Fallobsession.com slash podcast. That's where you guys can listen on our website. And there is a form on there like these few folks have filled out uh, to send us some feedback for this episode. You guys can still send us feedback. Um, we're, we want to know what you think, so be sure you log on there and send, them, send us some stuff. And we also uh, 
have a bunch of new apparel on our website, some new spring designs for, we got a bear hunting t-shirt on there for our bear country campaign, Midwestern high uh, tee coming off of the high of that snow goose hunt. We rolled that one out, new hat on there and a couple other hats that by the time this episode rolls out, they, uh, they should be back in stock. Some of our popular designs from the past. So be sure you guys go check it out at fallpossession.com slash store. Ridge Rock Hunt Company, they are our podcast partner. Derek and Lacey over there in Mississippi, they book hunts. They will set you up with a vetted outfitter. Um, They were on the podcast as early as last week, episode 99. They came and joined us, and in that episode, we talked a lot about turkey hunting, really. And again, just some stories. You know, Derek's shared a lot of stories on, he's already gone on a lot of turkey hunts already this year, and we're not even through April, but uh he also talked about Ridge Rock and what they're doing over there to set people up with vetted outfitters. They are good people, and Derek mentions multiple times that he works with hunters to find something that works for them, that's in their budget, that'll put them where they need to go and where they'll have good success. And every single one of his outfitters, um, he's either hunted with himself or he's had somebody he knows and trusts hunt with them. So you're going to a good place no matter where you go with them. So again, Ridge Rock Hunt Company, check them out on social media and on their website gentlemen anything i'm missing before we hang it up so i was gonna say you know looking back to when we first started this podcast i don't, I don't want to say i was you know twisting your arm or really trying to convince you that it was a good decision but i i do remember a little bit of hesitation on your end and not necessarily because it wasn't a good idea but because it was going to add a lot of workload to you know where we were already at as yeah. an organization um are you happy you've done it? 100 episodes in. I am happy that we've done it for sure. Um, it, 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 and yeah, I was right about it increasing the workload. <laughs> I'll say that, but uh, yeah. but I'm glad we've done it. It's it's been a, a good thing, and like and like I mentioned earlier on, it's it's one of my favorite uh, methods of content to be a part of creating. Honestly, I I love doing this. So yeah, it's a lot of work, but it's worth it in my opinion. So. Yeah. Yep. Hey. Big thanks to Nick Powell, who does a lot of the editing behind the scenes, too. So. Nick uh, Nick spends a lot of time in the editing room, and we appreciate it. So Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you all for listening to another Fall Obsession podcast episode, and we will be back next week for episode 101. Stay tuned.